Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of Team Minus 365. In today's episode, I'm going to be showing you how to get more employee engagement to help you achieve your objectives for 2023. When I talk to a lot of MSPs, they ultimately have really strong KPIs or key performance indicators, but they don't have such strength in tying those back to high level objectives that truly motivate people to go to work every day. A key example of this is a KPI of mean time to resolution and a tier one technician coming in and saying, okay, I'm gonna go hit this and I'm gonna try to improve this number, but I don't understand how my work is contributing to us achieving our top level goals or growing ultimately as an organization. So ultimately they end up feeling a little bit demotivated. You see, what we're actually trying to do here is we're just, we're trying to get a feel for how people spend their day at work. So if you would, would you walk us through a typical day for you? Yeah. Great. Well, I generally come in at least 15 minutes late. Uh, I use the side door. That way lumber can't see me. <laughs> and uh, after that, I just sort of space out for about an hour. Now, don't get me wrong here. I still love KPIs and I still think they're very important for an organization. But as you mature, and especially as you're going through a high level growth phase, I think you need to look at something further as far as the framework to follow in order to remain focused and also empower your employees all the way through the hierarchy of your organization at the same time. And for this reason, many organizations have looked at OKRs or objectives and key results. These were first pioneered by Andy Grove at Intel, and then they've grown in popularity over time through larger companies having success through them like Google, for instance. You can check out the book on this called Measure What Matters by John Dewar as well if you wanted to get into the in-depths of everything that OKRs can help you accomplish within an organization. I quickly just wanted to go through some of the major benefits. Okay, so the first benefit I want to talk about is focus. At any company, you're going to have distractions, but I believe it's hyper-focused at an MSP to have an enormous amount of distractions. Microsoft's coming out with new features for Intune. You have a server that's gone down at a customer site. Jim at Customer XYZ just clicked on the phishing link. You kind of get the, the focus here as far as all of the, the unique distractions that we have throughout the day. And ultimately, I think MSPs can get caught up with that day-to-day -day and lose track of the bigger picture, which is actually growing the company. And so when we think about OKRs, they're giving us a level of focus to basically have a North Star to point us in the direction of where we want to go. And it ultimately helps us make decisions not only on a macro scale, but on a micro scale during the week as well too. Second benefit I want to talk about is empowerment. If you institute OKRs correctly, you should be able to empower everybody from the top of the organization all the way down to the bottom of the hierarchy as well too to make them focus on the things that matter most for the organization, but also feel that intrinsic value that they're making a difference as well too with the work that they're conducting, not only on a quarterly basis, but on a daily basis as well too. And that helps them prioritize their work throughout the week. Third benefit I want to talk about is alignment. With the rise of remote work and hybrid work, alignment's getting really hard, especially if you're a growing organization. There's a lot of communication breakdowns that happen that ultimately lead to people wondering what's the most important thing to go work on or where they should be spending their focus. And also from an employee standpoint, there's, in my opinion, a lesser feedback loop that's coming in to give them more of that direction. If OKRs are instituted correctly, that should give you clarity on the most important things to work on from a team level and obviously at an organizational perspective. And there's a constant feedback loop that you're getting as well too when you're checking in with those goals that you're trying to achieve. The fourth benefit I'm gonna talk about is tracking. If you're using OKR software, like we'll see with Microsoft Viva Goals here in a few minutes, you're getting a platform to track all of your objectives and key results across the organization, teams, and individually as well too. So when you think about that, you're updating them, if you're using it correctly, at least on a weekly basis, if not on a daily basis. And that's giving everybody in the organization visibility to see who's on track, who's missing the mark, where we need to course correct, where we need to dive in for feedback as well too, to see what we can do to overcome some obstacles potentially for these goals. So it's giving you a lot of that visibility and dashboard view into making sure that you are still on track to do what you want to accomplish for the quarter, for the year moving forward. So the fifth and final benefit I want to talk about is innovation and ownership. Again, if OKRs are instituted correctly within an organization, you're giving the autonomy to everybody within the hierarchy to create their own objectives that either directly relate or indirectly relate to the top level goals of the organization. And so when you do it this way versus telling somebody what to do, they take an extreme amount of ownership against that goal and they're much more likely to accomplish that goal from a quarterly standpoint or an annual standpoint. 
Additionally, when you give them the autonomy, they're much more likely to create innovation in the company because they have the flexibility to think about these solutions in ways that are a little bit more creative in some ways that you may not have thought of if you're just telling them what to do uh, from a management perspective. So a lot of us I know are very averse to change and from management styles we can also see where employees could go wrong from not listening what you tell them to do either. Last week I gave a fire safety talk <clears throat> and nobody paid any attention. It's my own fault for using PowerPoint. PowerPoint is boring. People learn in lots of different ways, but experience is the best teacher. Okay, so that's enough of me rambling. I wanna dive into the actual Viva Goals experience from Microsoft and show you guys a demo of this piece of software just to so get a better idea of how you potentially could use this within your organization. Okay, so getting Viva Goals set up is really easy here. You can go under the admin portal under billing and purchase services and search for Viva Goals. Or if you're working with the distributor, you could search for the product on their side. Essentially here, Viva Goals is available for $6 per user per month USD. And you do have the ability to start a trial, which gives you 50 licensed users as well, too, to play around with. It's definitely what I recommend if you're evaluating this or seeing if it can be effective within your organization. After you're done, just like any other tool or license within Microsoft, you're going in here and you're assigning it to a user so that they will be able to access it within Microsoft Teams. So let's go ahead and pivot into Teams and see how they look at that application. Okay, so I'm in Viva Goals here, which is the app. You can go into the three little dots here on the right-hand side and search for Viva Goals after you have a license associated to you. And then additionally, if you're an admin, you can go into the Teams Admin Center and pin it to this left-hand nav if you really wanted to do that for all the users as well too. If you're using it in a production level environment, it should be something you probably should pin on the left-hand side just because you should be accessing it at least on a weekly basis to check in with your goals that you've been assigned or have created in objectives here as well too. So within here, once you get set up, it'll ask you to define an organization name. I've already done that, so that's why we just kind of skip past that page. But in most all cases, you're going to only have one organization, especially for MSPs in the SMB space. From there, you have this little quick start guide that takes you to like a walk me through all the features as well too. And if you're an admin, you can see this here and you can see kind of all of the uh, key features and, and things you can modify here within them. I'm not gonna get into all of these as well, um, just for the sake of time, but you can restrict members to the organization if you really wanted to, or allow everyone to join. I restricted it just for demo purposes, but most likely you're gonna allow anyone to join because it's an organizational level visibility that you want to promote. Um, so from here, you have the ability to pop into various tabs here, but the thing that's going to be pinned is your organization and the definition here is your OKRs. So getting into it, you can start with different time periods. So in the forefront, it's likely either you're gonna make some annual goals or you're gonna work on a single quarter. The other quarters, it's unlikely you have that foresight in order to determine what those are gonna be and it takes a little bit more strategic planning each quarter to finalize those as well too. But within here, you're able to see some sample OKRs just to give you a heads up as far as, or a head start, I should say, as far as what you can do. So they have examples here and they have the key results defined. And then also additionally have a projects concept where you can link a project to an objective and have tasks associated to it so that you can basically map that from a progress standpoint. So I won't get into all that, but when you start off here, you're going to go ahead and add an objective. And for me, I'm going to go ahead and add an objective of achieving 1 million of MRR, so mean recurring revenue. You can change the type here to be an organizational objective or a team objective or an individual objective. So this is getting a little bit into the strategy here, but obviously you're gonna have your top level organizational objectives, and then you may have teams that have objectives as well too that maybe indirectly relate to the top level but aren't really specific to achieving the top level goals. So they're helping out with that, and again, you may also have some child dependencies based off of the key results of the organization as well too. So when we come in here and we achieve 1 million of RRR, we can define certain things like the outcome is measured by 100% of completion. You can get into you know more new granular settings there as well, but I'm not gonna get into that. You can also have the progress roll up from the key results or have them roll up manually. I like to leave it at that default there just so that it's aligned. And then you could also align this objective with certain titles, time periods, teams, or owners. And again, that's just a kind of a side benefit. I wouldn't recommend looking into all that interdependency right away. It's just kind of establishing the goals and then you know kind of cleaning that up afterwards as well. 
but we can go ahead and create this top level objective which then gives us his here and we can go ahead and start check-ins as well which basically give you the ability to add percentage completion and some notes as well here too but the first thing that you're going to do here is click into it and you're going to go into the key results section and you're going to start adding key results so for this objective that we have here we're going to have some key results and the first one here I'm going to put in is sign five new customers at 40 percent margin uh, or greater so within this it's again just like the other one we can update the progress manually or automatically from a data source Viva Goals has a lot of integrations. There's not many that I've seen where it's a tool that an MSP would be using per se on a regular basis, but there may be some like an Excel workbook or Trello or some other type of tool you might be using potentially. And I'll link those integrations below. They're very common and a lot of uh, more software or dev related organizations. So again, we have the details here of this objective. We have owners, we have the timeframes, and then we have the alignment here all going up to the objective. So I can go ahead and create that, and this creates the objective or key result, I should say, underneath the objective here. So it's complete hierarchy and you can minimize it or expand. So I'm just gonna pause briefly and I'm gonna go ahead and populate some more key results and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've added here my key results and they're various here, but they're all folded up underneath here of the Achieve 1 million MRR. You can click into these as well too, as far as the top result or as far as the key objective. And you can go into the project section and you can actually add a project here as well too. So maybe our project is going to be coupled with our complete two m as and we're gonna say onboard Wayne Enterprises. So we have that here as a project and we can measure the progress as far as it being manually. And then we can also add task as well to here that we want to complete like migrate the ticketing system. And we'll say we want that done by the end of this month. And we can add an owner to that if we really wanted to as well. And we go ahead and save this and this will give us a project underneath here as well too, which is really related to the overall rollup of our objective. So you can also integrate project as in the Microsoft licensing if you really wanted to use well. If you're already using that, you don't have to use a separate project format here as well um, if you didn't want to. The additional thing I wanted to point out here is child objectives. So if you think about, again, strategy of OKRs, you may have this top level objective here set by the organization, set by the leadership, but then you may have other teams that want to key off of uh, the key results, meaning that if you have five new customers or greater that you want to sign. Maybe the sales organization wants to establish a different objective off of that that they want to hit that will overall help that objective for the top level organization. So within here, I can go ahead and add that. I said create new lead funnel for an objective. And instead of organization here, I can go under teams and I've already created this team, but I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. But essentially here I could assign it to the sales organization, could give for different owners for that and delegates as well too. And then overall I can just go ahead and create this so that it makes this dependency here as a child objective underneath. And then I have this new lead funnel um, that is set for my child objective for achieving 1 million of MRR. And that again is for our sales organization. So that's a pretty cool feature. That's where you get into these dependencies and you can see how this relates to the top level objectives over time through the reporting that's available as well. Within here, you can go ahead and click on to these particular key results and you can check in at any time as a user. And so for this one, let's say we're 50% done because we onboarded Wayne Enterprises. I can go ahead and check in and this will go ahead and update our entire top level objective here as well too, where you have this on track, it's at 50% as our check-in notes and then it updated our top level achieve 1 million MRR here as well. And you can see that more so too in the summary section where you have more, if you had a lot of objectives here, you could see more of the progress over time. And it's giving you, you know, this linear line of growth here of expectations of, you know, being on track or being behind as well. So you can add notes here. This is where you have a lot of the feedback loop that's going on, a lot of transparency for the organization from looking at these uh, objectives and kind of adjusting over time if you're seeing that you're not on track to meet these. So it's a better representation than you have gotten in the past for a lot of these things. These other tabs relate to um, you know, the other things that we wanna do here as well, which is the projects. And so you can add them all here 
But again, we saw that we could do that from this top level page as well. You have dashboards in this view as well too to see your progress and you can present this real time as well if you wanted. And people who have been providing key updates here just gives you a good way to summarize that without all having to do that all at one time or just quickly seeing it from an org perspective. They also have these other widgets that you can add here as well. If you go into there and there's um, text blocks, KPI lists, things like that. So maybe for an MSP, uh, KPI list would make more sense to put into this dashboard as well too. So you can see how those uh, performance indicators are related to your OKRs and how they're matching up as well as a holistic report. The team section here is what um, that was showing here as far as that hierarchy where you can choose to assign an objective to a team or to the organization. You can go into all teams here and see them. This one, one pet peeve about this software right now or this product is that obviously you have the Active Directory data. So why am I going in and creating the hierarchy again? I can see there might be a little bit difference potentially um, if you are having some objectives relate to teams that are more narrowly focused, but in 99% of cases, you're gonna use the hierarchy that's in Active Directory. So I don't understand why um, we have to manually create these, but maybe that's something um, that they'll change over time. So you can also go back here into the teams themselves and you can see um, their overall objectives and key results, their projects and things like that. And you can build a list off of that and then tie them to the top level organizational goals that are in Capsule Corp for this reason. So that's a way you can kind of manage that across your teams. You can see that over time. You can see um, various users as well too that are part of your team or your direct reports as well once you get those in there. Down below here, you also have the ability to set your own individual OKRs in a separate section. So that's a cool thing if you wanted to get your own individuals to set their own goals as well. And then in the Explorer section, you can also see the uh, all objectives here. So I could see even the individual goals. I can see the sales goals. I could see the capsule court roles as far as everything that you have in a holistic roll up. And you could add filters to this as well too. So you can really create a better dashboard level experience as well. Um, and you also have things like your overdue OKRs or OKRs not updated in the last seven days or behind the risk OKRs. So a lot of things that you want to do as far as um, you know, measuring the progress and also staying on top of making sure these things are on track to be completed for them. You can also create new views here where you add your own filters and save it as a personal view. So that's pretty cool. The last thing I wanted to show you though is kind of more of the end user experience through sharing these goals. You have the ability to share some of the objectives here directly from within a Teams chat, which I think is pretty cool. And then you can click in and you can view the details behind this, which brings up a little modal essentially that can get you into uh, that objective and you can see more of the information or if you're just looking, hey, check into this, you know, make give us some updates on this uh, key result. You can go ahead and do that and send it to users, but you can get to there by looking at those little ellipses here on the right and then clicking on Viva Goals and then you can search for OKRs or projects. So I could say like, hey, I want to look for my achieve 1 billion or 1 million ARR or MRR and I'll pull that up here and I can pull it up and I can go ahead and, and send this to them and ask for something as part of that. So can you update the status on this or what's your progress on this key result? Something like that. So it's just a cool way to collaborate that's already built in. I think that's one of the more powerful parts of this compared to other OKR software tools. Okay guys, that's everything I had for you today in this video. Hope that helped with some of the goal planning you have for 2023. And I hope it gave you some more insights on Microsoft Viva goals. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. Otherwise, like I always mentioned, like and subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.